Hey friends and welcome back. My name is Khaled and in this video we're going to talk about how you can ace your USMLE Step 1 exam. Personally, I took the exam when it was still showing a score. However, I still believe that sharing my experience could prove useful, especially since preparing well for your Step 1 is going to lay the foundation for doing well on your Step 2 CK and Step 3 exams. In this video, we'll be covering the different resources and study strategies that you could employ, the timeline for the exam, the different assessments to track your progress, as well as some last few tips on exam day. When it comes to choosing your resources, it's really going to depend on the foundation of knowledge that you have set from your medical school. The most important resource without a doubt is going to be a question bank called UWorld. UWorld is a question bank that people should use as a learning tool. It provides you with questions and then once you answer those questions you get to see an explanation on the topic as well as an explanation for why each answer is wrong and why the correct answer is the correct answer. One of the most common misconceptions regarding UWorld is that it can be used as an assessment tool. This is largely incorrect because UWorld itself is only there to allow you to learn. It has all these high quality explanations that explain everything you need to know about a specific learning point. Because of this, you shouldn't let wrong answers discourage you. Because of this, you shouldn't really be paying attention to how well you're scoring in every single block. Currently, at the time of making this video, there's roughly 3,600 questions in UWorld, so if you do a block or two a day, then you'll be finishing sometime between 90 and 45 days. The second important resource that you could use is the USMLE First Aid Step 1 book. This is a wonderful comprehensive review book that allows you to summarize a lot of the important concepts needed for the exam within 600 pages. It's important to note that they don't really share explanations. Uh, first aid usually requires you to develop your own understanding of concepts so that when it comes time to revisit them, it's usually easier to review them. If you do something like 10 pages per day of actual active reading, then you should be able to finish the book within two months. So both UWorld and First Aid provide you with the much needed information that you need to know for the exam. If you couple this with good medical knowledge and a strong foundation from your own medical school, then you can somewhat rely on UWorld and First Aid, try your luck with the assessments, and if you're at a comfortable margin, you can pretty much go into the exam. If instead your foundation is somewhat lacking or your assessments aren't really revealing that you're at a comfortable margin, then you can add more resources if it's a knowledge deficit. For example, you can add Pathoma. It's a video series and there's even a book that goes over the fundamentals of pathology. You can also add Boards and Beyond. It's another video series where you can see a lot of good explanations, high quality explanations um, regarding certain topics. Moreover, if you're struggling with biostats, I actually have a playlist on my channel which goes through the many concepts listed in first aid and kind of explains them thoroughly. Now let's talk about some of the study strategies that you could employ. Because step one switched to pass-fail, you don't really want to put too much time and effort into this exam. Instead, you kind of want to shift your focus more towards step two, attaining letters of recommendation, getting US clinical experience, getting, for example, research experience in publications. So because of that, you kind of have to use your time very, very efficiently. Because of that, I recommend that you use study strategies that you know, are pretty time efficient. And uh, one that comes to mind is spaced repetition. Whether that's using Anki or using, for example, um, the UWorld notebook that comes with UWorld where you can actually copy certain portions of the text and put it into the notebook, or for example, taking your own handwritten notes and then revising them, for example, every two days, then every week and so on. Ultimately, try to use the most time efficient strategy and the strategy that works for you. I only found out about NQ when I was studying for my step two exam. However, I was still employing the spaced repetition concept where I would actually take handwritten notes onto my first aid book and then revise certain sections every so often days. When it comes to self-assessments, you have the NBME as well as UWorld self-assessments. There's also a free 120, which is entirely from the name free. When I was taking my exam, the most predictive out of these were NBME 18, UWSA 2, and free 120. And personally, I felt that those were really the most reflective of my actual exam. So how high exactly should you be scoring on these tests? Well, given the amount of variance that exists when you're doing one assessment versus another, I would recommend at least trying to score above 20 to 30 points above the passing grade. This, in my opinion, gives you a comfortable margin for error just in case the day of the exam is a bit more difficult than you were anticipating and you got a lower score than your assessments. You would still have a comfortable margin left for you to still pass the exam. As one last final tip, I really recommend that you try and take assessments interspersed. So for example, take one um, near the end of your 
um, first round of U World, and then take one as you finish, for example, your first round of first aid. And then if you'd like to do, for example, your flagged questions or your incorrect questions, and then do another assessment, for example. Try not to leave all your assessments at the end because then you won't be able to really track your progress and see if, for example, first aid helped you or if it didn't help you and so on. Now let's talk about exam day and what you can do the few days leading up to it. I really recommend that you at least once go over the USMLE content outline, which I'll leave a link to in the description. This document is essentially 30 pages and contains all the relevant information that they may ask about. They have pretty much bullet points of the things that they could ask about, and just bear in mind that this could be across all USMLE, so step one, step two, and step three. However, try and just you know go over it and make sure you didn't miss anything big that could appear on your step one exam. And don't forget, the day before the exam is usually the day that you're going to feel the most nervous. So just, I would really recommend you just take it easy. You know, relax, do something that you love, exercise maybe, and just get a really, really good night's rest. On the day of the exam, I really don't recommend trying anything new. Don't take any new medications that you feel may help you or anything like that. Don't take any sleeping aids. Don't take anything that you haven't already previously tried because that could just really ruin the day that you're doing the exam. It is seven long blocks and you have an extra hour of break that you can divide. So this is my personal recommendation. Use the breaks very liberally. Use them at I personally use them at every single, between every single block. So my own division was uh, five minutes between the first two blocks, then 10, then five, then 20, then 10, 10. So that's how I divided it and I felt that that worked for me. Um, so yeah, divide it however way you want, but I have seen people who do blocks back to back and I personally don't recommend this. Try and at least take, you know, even if you have to sit in your own chair, um, take five minutes and just, you know, rest for the next block. I personally brought a big mug of coffee and I would take sips between blocks and I, I just, you know, the overall process of just getting up and moving really prepared myself um, for the next block. During the exam, I really recommend that you answer all the questions and this is because uh, there's no negative marking. So unlike other exams, for example, the SAT, um, the USMLE does not have negative marking. So just by answering uh, and getting it wrong doesn't mean that either they're going to take away anything from your mark. Um, so don't really skip questions and then, you know, you might run out of time and you don't have time to go back to them to answer anything. Because again, you know, if there are five questions, you have like a 20% chance to get it just by guessing. So just try your luck and uh, don't waste too much time on, on these, um, you know, questions. Some of them could be entirely experimental and contribute nothing to your grade. Um, so don't waste too much time on them because you're not actually pushing your grade above the pass threshold if you're wasting too much time on them. Instead, you would be taking time from the other questions that could not be experimental. So just as a good point of view, um, try not to waste more than, for example, a minute and a half on each question. And uh, the more time you can save uh, from a minute and a half, you would just be adding it to your revision time for the whole block. With all that in mind, depending on your own knowledge base and your foundations um, and how well you can you know, efficiently finish UWorld, uh, whether or not you might have free time uh, to do that sort of stuff or if you have other commitments, you're looking at about, for example, three to eight months of studying and preparing for this exam. With that, I really wish you the best of luck for your USMLE Step 1 exam. If you found this video beneficial, then please consider hitting the like button, subscribing, and hitting the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.